Well, we're not doing a reaction just yet. That's for later. I'm just telling you guys what we're doing today. We're going to do this Steven Universe movie. I'm so hyped. Nothing yet. Great. Um, can't wait. This film should be good. You guys are going to have to wait a while. Maybe. It might be on this. Might have to download it. Or, maybe if they don't, maybe if cable doesn't shut me down, we'll do it on the YouTube. We'll put it on YouTube. But I think I'm going to have to download it. More likely, I'm gonna have to. Also, another announcement. Well, two announcements. We got Final Space to do today. Also, again, I might have to download it. Again, is it. Shit, no. Um. Well, we're gonna have to wait. Maybe today or tomorrow. But this, the confusing ones that I might have to wait for a little bit, would be the Disenchantment. Maybe I'll do that. And maybe the Steven Universe Season... Actually, I'm going to do Steven Universe Season 6 when it first airs. <laughs> Just saying. And Walking Dead. I'm going to have to get a Walking Dead recap, am I? God, I know what we're doing now. <laughs> Pause. This is now a Walking Dead recap video, okay? The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead recap. Recap. Fuck me. Okay. <laughs> Who's happy? I'm happy. Are you guys ready to begin? Um, is there another recap? Season one, two, nine. We'll do season nine. Major, what can you tell us about the Lima project? The ship disappeared approximately. Listen, somehow a show about dead people is still alive and kicking with no end in sight. And when it comes to TV LMEs, this is probably one of the most requested ones. And there's a bunch out there that you guys can continue commenting down below. And thanks to the peeps over at Philo. We're looking to explain them all. If you don't want to get spoiled, as you know we do here on LME, you can literally catch up on the entirety of The Walking Dead through your phone, tablet, TV, refrigerator, if you got that function on it, just by downloading Philo. You get 40 channels for only 16 bucks a month. I'm going to be straight with you. You can literally get it, cancel it once your favorite show starts airing. But here at LME, we got you even further, right? If you click the link down below, you'll get an entire week where you can catch up on everything for free. And it's so legit, they ain't even asking for your card info when you sign up, right? You literally just put in your phone number and you can start binging live TV, recording your favorite shows. And we like it so much, uh, I'll be honest, you can just go to the site and sign up. But if you like what we do here at LME, you can use that link and support the channel by literally watching free TV. So shout out for those of you who do, for those who comment down below on what you want to see the next TV LME be on. And shout out to Philo for helping me turn into a zombie as I re-binged 115 episodes of the the Walking Dead. Wow. So, let me explain. Season 1 is hands down the best one. It was run by the dude who made Shawshank, was a tight six episodes, and obviously kicked off one of the biggest series of all time. We meet Rick Grimes, who's a sheriff that ended up in a coma after a shootout, and dude was out for so long that by the time he awoke, the freaking zombie apocalypse had swept over. Like, imagine getting your wisdom teeth removed, and when you get out, 
World War III has started. He tries to look for his family and shoots a little girl. Ends up finding a father-son duo who helps him out a bit before he leaves them and tells Morgan that he'll see him later. He sees him later. Homie plays real-life Red Dead into town but forgets it's the DLC, causing him to pull a Sierra Burgess under a tank when luckily Glenn from The Walking Dead saves him and they end up on a rooftop. Now, they're in the south so you know that there's still tensions going on between these two and T-Dog dropping the keys, leaving Yonder to reenact Saw. That doesn't help. They end up dressing up like Lady Gaga in order to get past the walkers. They end up at a camp where Rick is able to reconnect with his family, but little does he know that his ex-buddy of a cop was connecting with his wife. Of course, now that they're in the apocalypse, everything's changed, so they have a completely different set of worries, right? Their only concerns are adultery and domestic abuse and racial tensions, but there's hope when they go to the CDC in order to find a cure, except that when they get there, the dude who's running the place is trying to pull a Desmond from Lost, and he wants to self-destruct the place when AMC's like, whoa, 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 we're gonna milk this show for all it's got, and they allow the main cast to drive off and find another season. Now, this one drags more than the huge traffic jam that they find themselves in the beginning. There are a bunch of videos out there on the production which you could definitely catch on how AMC pretty much just started whoring out the episodes, right? They fired Frank Darabont in order to stretch out the series and... Honestly, you can tell. While they're stuck in the interstate, Sophie makes the dumbest choice of her life and randomly runs off the side. And while they're out trying to look for her... They Bambi Carl. But he ends up in heaven. There's this farm run by a dude named Herschel who has the hottest daughters in the apocalypse. And he allows him to stay there as Carl I can see recovers. Why this is heaven. <laughs> even though nobody in this farm agrees with each other. There's Dale who's like Walter White in his RV. If he never broke bad. And eventually he dies and he was supposed to be the most yeah, this moral is heaven. one. Rick and Shane are always tweaking and arguing with each other. Especially when it turns out that Lori's pregnant. And unless they rock, paper, scissors it, one of them is going to have to go. And then it turns out that Herschel's been keeping zombies in his barn because he believes in rehabilitating them and since half the group finds that to be extremely weird shane decides to go let me tell you something no shoots all the zombies revealing that sophia was actually in there the entire time as she comes out as a walker in the end and rick continues to shoot kids. never mind this now, is hell like john bernthal unless my man's playing the punisher Dude is way too intense to be around, right? Rick realizes this and sets out to kill Shane. And like father, like son, Carl also kills Shane. They end up leaving the farm as they head to a prison. And it turns out that that sweet nothing that was whispered in Rick's ear in season one was that everyone is already infected. So even if you die of a damn paper cut, you're coming back as a walker. Rick tells him that he's in charge and that what he says goes as we cut into the intro of a brand new character. <laughs> They make it to the prison where they find criminals who've been locked in there so long that the criminals are like, there's a, there's a, did we miss Taco Tuesday? Rick tries to divide the prison with the criminals, but then realizes why they're criminals to begin with and decides to cut it. They get a new black person in the cast, so, you know, the AMC rule. They get rid of T-Dog and so long, sweet prince, and then so long Tyrese when they see Morgan again. Lori gives birth, so again, they need to cut it, and Carl has to put his mama down, and he does so like a man. In fact... It's his dad who starts losing it. Homie starts talking to his dead wife on the phone. He's going crazy and kicking out innocent people from the shelter. And then he has to deal with this dude called the governor. Now, I don't want to fully be that person, but I'm going to be that person. The governor in the comic was crazy. Dude straight up chopped Rick's hand off the moment that they met, which meant that the literal main character from the series had no arm for over 100 issues. Maybe it was, you know, saving them ink not to draw that hand and perhaps the CGI for TV was too expensive, but man, I wanted to see that scene. Anyways, the governor grossly governs Woodbury, which is this mini town that's been set up. They got their own little society, but like this dude has his dead daughter on a leash. Instead of cable, this guy just sits and watches a dead aquarium. He kills the National Guard for their weapons, shoots his own damn people, hired the kosherman insatiable to be a doctor, and then almost gropes Glenn's girl before he realizes he ain't on HBO. Merle yeah. from season one comes back it's with an arm, so I, I guess that was the substitute. And since he sees himself as his brother's daddy, he turns on the governor to help Rick's group before he himself turns. Michonne and Andrea also end up in Woodbury, and if you saw Breaking Bad and you knew how bad Skyler was, bro, Andrea had always been worse during this time. Like, there were so many scenes where she would just fall down. There was points where she was shooting people who were in her own group. She was always complaining, but it's specifically in season three where she had the chance to bash the governor 
and instead smashes the governor. So he kills her instead. Michonne, who is a top three character, grabs her katana, shish kebabs the governor, and kills his already dead daughter as he gets this enraged so Michonne much to the, the point that he sets his one good eye out to destroy the prison. <laughs> If y'all haven't read The Rise of the Governor, I highly recommend it. You know, even if you just Wikipedia it and read the plot, it's a super dope backstory about the governor. I think you're going to enjoy it. And it's the perfect thing to entertain you during the first couple episodes of this season because they're literally just dealing with a pig flu. Eventually, the governor does return with a tank, and since he's been practicing a swing, he puts that swing into play and then knocks over their fences since he knows Denzel ain't inside. The fences get split, Michonne splits the governor, and then the group gets split as all this chaos goes down. So now we got one storyline where Carl starts going through puberty while his dad hibernates. Daryl and Beth get super drunk on moonshine before he loses her and ends up joining a biker gang. Glenn and Tara run into this country group as he tries to find his wife. They randomly meet the penguin a bit earlier, but the craziest one of them all is the storyline with Carol and Tyrese, who are taking care of these two sisters. And one of the sisters sees zombies as, like, pets, so she decides to turn her own sister into a zombie... And like, they have to of mice and men her. Before they all get reunited after getting captured, Rick gets captured. And in what I think is one of the most sickest scenes of the entire series, Rick kills this dude by biting off his neck. Which is completely ironic when you realize that the place that they're about to go to, Terminus, is full of cannibals. All of them are able to reunite as they get corralled into a boxcar and become dry-aged meat as they're cooped up in there like chicken run by the end of the season. them from Terminus yeah. with a couple of bombs that he does. Uh, uh, she just found. Daryl from my most favorite characters, including Daryl. Uh, living ones. They meet Gabriel, who's a bigger punk than Judas Iscariot, since he left his entire congregation out to die. But then there's this other punk named Eugene, who convinced these two to take care of him, because he swore to them that he was a scientist who can find a cure as long as they got him to Washington. But... Alive! Not a scientist. Getting Knock him out cold even in the apocalypse now a big part of this season is trying to get back beth who's in a hospital and it turns out that she's the only it's one who doesn't hate chris but like all of her previous crushes it ain't gonna go so well she ends up getting shot and the entire group ends up without hope in the middle of nowhere until a younger kevin spacey who as long as they keep a watch on carl they should be okay Rick at first doesn't want to trust him until Aaron reminds him that he chooses to live as a gay man. And they go with him to Alexandria. They're pretty progressive in this place as it's run by a congresswoman and everyone's actually doing okay. They're all nice. It's this little society where everyone's safe. It's just none of them know how to deal with the apocalypse. These dudes are having like cocktail parties and PTA meetings. Most of them don't even know how to spell the word zombie. So Rick starts going a little crazy and he starts acting like the villain because he wants to take over in order to force everyone to be safe. And so Michonne has to Conor McGregor the dude. Town ends up setting up a meeting to decide whether they should kick out Rick or not. But because they couldn't even close the front door, Rick ends up pulling up to this meeting with a zombie claiming his point that they don't know how to take care of themselves when a crazy husband shows up with a katana trying to kill rick accidentally kills the congresswoman's husband by accident and then rick is given free range to take over alexandria as it starts to fall apart but hey he sees morgan again yeah we see morgan again that's morgan so now there's this new group called the wolves who cut w's into their forehead and they just keep taunting them but this season is more concerned about romance. Rick was dating the wife of the dude who tried to kill him before moving on to Michonne. Tara starts dating the doctor. Carl starts flirting with this emo girl. Abraham was dating Rosita before going to Sasha. And right when Maggie finds out she's pregnant, this punk shoots himself, causing Glenn to fall into a horde of zombies. And of course, they would follow up this cliffhanger of an episode with a slow-paced flashback episode. So instead, let me take this time to show you a little Kill Count Mata. <laughs> Turns out 
turns out Glenn didn't die, but pretty much everyone else dies as Alexandria gets run over by zombies. Carl loses an eye so he doesn't have to keep seeing all this bull crap. And as their souls start to deteriorate, they end up fighting Jesus. Who introduces them to another community called the Hilltop, run by this punk named Gregory, and another spot named the Kingdom by a dude who owns a freaking tiger. The wolves then turn into the saviors, who are now the problem, and they seem to have goons everywhere. Like, they all pull that Spartacus thing where they all claim that they're Negan, the supposed leader of the group. They're causing these roadblocks. Eugene bites a penis, and then the real Negan shows up, lines up the entire main cast to teach them a lesson for killing his men, and that hits the camera. <laughs> So unlike the biblical story of Isaac, Abraham gets sacrificed here, which sucks because he was a cool character who at least got to say one dope line before he got cut. But at least, you know, luckily, it wasn't like the comics where they killed the day one. No! I just you so hard, your eyeball just popped out! Lena Negan then just makes everything so depressing, which it's funny because his backstory is that he was a PE teacher who survived the apocalypse by belittling people. He even named his bat Lucille after his wife who died of cancer, but he's the reason why there's a whole unrated cut of these seasons because he just likes throwing out F-bombs. He's torturing Daryl, even though everyone knows he's going to be fine because he's a boondock saint. We learned that Negan acts like a Mormon who likes oh, taking if, other people's... If, if you're telling me they can't say the F for once, how does... How the hell did Spirit of Walking Dead say the F word? Hmm? Hmm? Wives, and if anyone tries to do anything, like Dwight here, he just irons their face. He makes Eugene his hoe, since, you know, Eugene's a punk who, even when his own people try to rescue him, he pukes on them. Rick's still set on killing Negan, though, so he decides to steal guns from these why the last man group of ladies who's run by a grandma, tries to partner up with these trash people who have guns, but the only way to get them is by fighting their walker minotaur. Uh, it's weird. But then the trash people end up double-crossing them. Negan pulls up and is about to whack a old Carl when Tony the Tiger appears from the depths of hope. All, the all out war. Now everything's an all out war. For some reason, Rick goes back to ask the trash people for help, even though they screwed him over, and they screw him even more with this random GQ photo shoot instead. Carl gets bit because he wanted to save his medical students, and he ends up leaving letters for everyone, including Negan, since they, they randomly had a cooking show at one point. And then he exits the show so he can go play Fortnite. Meanwhile, Negan's going back and forth with his right hand man named Simon, who played Trevor in GTA, so you know this dude is messed up, but they're arguing about whether they they should kill all the humans or whether they should be using them as resources and since simon doesn't want to agree with him negan double taps x and kills him a bunch more violence ensues they randomly meet georgie who's like a third grade music teacher more violence ensues as people turn a helicopter randomly appears they continue their all-out war and there's talking zombies <laughs> By the end of season 8, I swear there was like 20 double crosses that were happening in each episode, but the biggest twist of them all was that the bullets that Eugene has been making this entire time were actually rigged to backfire on the saviors in order to help Rick win. So, I guess he was a scientist after all. Rick and Negan have a street fight, a Fast and Furious fight, Eugene and then the final now. fight where he slashes Negan's Act throat no, before second guessing his options and giving Negan 25 for life instead. At this point, Maggie's starting to plan revenge because she wants Negan to get the death penalty. AMC renews another dozen seasons as they fast forward in time for nine. And Andrew Lincoln pulls a Captain America as he retires his role as Rick Grimes. But he's got to see Morgan one more time before he goes. Thank you guys for checking out this well, video. Does, and a big shout him out to Philo. You know, if there are any TV so series out there that, that you guys want us to make count. another LME on uh, for a TV series, you know, comment it down below. Whichever one gets the most will Shut probably up. be the next one. Be quiet. I, he does see him in Fear the Walking Dead, so I guess that counts. Pause. We're going to find Season 9 recap. Okay. Um, one second.
Walking Dead Season 9 was full of time jumps, major character exits, and iconic scenes from the comics. Incoming showrunner Angela Kang breathed new life into the show, Thank you, and we Angela are excited Kang. to break down everything that went down in the first eight episodes as quickly as possible. I'm Winnie Tondorf, and this is the Skybound Rundown. Season 9 begins a year and a half after the end of All Out War. The communities are bigger, Maggie's a mom, I oh, didn't get her anything, and Daryl's running sanctuary. Field trip, no yelling on the bus. The communities all join up to take supplies from a museum and barely make it out alive. <laughs> on their way back, Ezekiel tries and fails to propose to Carol, and we meet two new characters from the comics, Ken and Marco. I'm sure they'll have a long and rich story, and Ken's dead for trying to save the horses. Later, Maggie breaks the news of Ken's death to his parents, Tammy and Earl, who blame Maggie even though their son died in the dumbest way possible. Meanwhile, Rick arrives at Sanctuary where he's treated like Christ. Daryl's had enough and tells Rick this place is a lost cause, he's tired of running it, all the project management software is broken. Meanwhile, Carol, the patron saint of lost causes, offers to take this dump off his hands. Back at Hilltop, Gregory, who lost an election to Maggie, gets Earl drunk and convinces him to avenge Ken's death by killing Maggie. But it turns out, when you hire a drunk to be an assassin, it doesn't go great, so... It doesn't work out. Maggie confronts Gregory, who also tries and fails to kill her, and it's almost death o'clock for Greg. Rick and Michonne arrive the next day, Maggie reminds Rick who's really in charge, and then publicly hangs Gregory that night. <laughs> she warns Hilltop that this is what could happen to anyone who comes after her. Due process be damned. A full effing month later, Rick sets up a camp connecting all the communities and as Daryl and his people build a bridge with the Saviors. What could go wrong? A fight breaks out between Justin the Savior and Daryl, but Rick breaks it up. Later, a walker distraction plan fails and a herd descends onto our heroes. Aaron's arm is crushed by a log in the commotion and Enid is like, oh, this is a great chance to put Aaron into Rick cosplay and amputates his arm. <laughs> Upset over Aaron's arm, Daryl demands to know who effed up the plan. It was Justin, son of a bitch. <laughs> Also, there's some nice beast story about Maggie and Earl bonding. Carol's wearing Zeke's ring. Love it. Ship it real hard. Rick taunts Negan in his cell. Rude. And Gabriel and Anne are getting romantic. Wait, what? Oh, best season ever, guys. This priest fucks. Also, Anne sees the helicopter again as Justin is attacked by a mystery assailant. Justin turns up the next morning as a walker. And the saviors are rightfully pissed. They nearly come to blows with our heroes until Rick rides in like the Patriot and vows to get to the bottom of the dead saviors. Detective Grimes is on the case. Law and order sound. Rick asks Gabe where Anne was last night and even questions Daryl about his whereabouts. Daryl's like, dude, I'm on your side. Making matters worse, a rock goes missing and Columbo Grimes is like, what the fuck is going on? Long story short, it was Cindy and the Oceanside gals, who sound like a great band name, who say they've been killing the saviors in retribution for them killing their families. They probably play death metal. Cindy straight up murders a rod as payback. Very metal. Also, Carol stabs a savior named Jed, and Gabe catches Jadis at the junkyard talking to the helicopter people on a walkie about having an A or a B. What does it mean? Who knows? Jadis is weird. She asked him to come with her, and he's like, no, it's okay. You ground up people as hamburgers, so she knocks him out. Maggie, who is inspired by the Oceanside gals getting revenge, packs up a crowbar and heads to Alexandria to enact her own against Negan. Rick tries to stop her, but Daryl intentionally delays him to let Maggie do her thing. The two fight until they fall into a giant ditch, which allows them to finally have a heart-to-heart -heart about their problems. Meanwhile, Michonne and Negan bond after Negan threatens a hunger strike while Jadis decides not to kill Father Gabriel. How could you kill... He's pathetic. You can't murder that guy. Come on. The saviors attack the camp after they find out about Oceanside's secret murders, leading Rick and Daryl to hear the gunshots, put their differences aside, and escape to help. They will also never talk about the time that their noses touched and they almost kissed. Rick leaves Daryl to direct the horde away from the camp, which leads to Rick getting surrounded by walkers and throwing up his walls under some brain oh, oh no, that's bad. Dying in the least cool way possible, Rick hallucinates seeing himself in the hospital bed from the pilot. His old self tells him to wake up, asshole. Also cool beard. So he does and pulls himself off the rebar with his belt, which is hardcore. Oh my god. And manages to hop back on his horse while the walkers chase behind. Rick's hallucinations continue. He talks to Shane in the cop car, where Shane talks trash about how he knocked up Lori. Herschel's on the farm looking at a really nice sunset. And then Sasha's on a giant pile of bodies of everyone they've ever known. As all of That's not from the first episode. That's where the Rick Grimes movies are going to take place. Where the shooting I seen at. This is going down, Maggie. Finally makes it into Alexandria, past Michonne, and into Negan. So they gave you a little clip of it in this episode. You're welcome. And so, where she decides not to kill him because he's already worse than dead. Awesome, so great, we could have all avoided this. In what seemed to be his final moments, Rick leads the walkers onto the savior bridge and he hopes they fall through. Unfortunately, it's Rick's plans that falls through, but Rick is saved by the last minute by his friends. Yeah, we can all go home. Now wake up. God 
damn it. Rick wakes up on the bridge alone with the walkers closing in. He's then saved by his friends again, but now it's not a dream. Except they're far, and Rick has to shoot the conveniently placed dynamite, blowing the walkers and himself up to Kingdom Come. Or does he? Later, Janice's helicopter people arrive, and she is SOL with an A or a B. Luckily, she finds Rick washed up on shore and offers him up in exchange for her ticket out of there. They agree. Rick gets saved and flown away in a helicopter as we pan down to see Magnus Group from the comics. They get saved from walkers by a little girl wearing a Carl hat. Just times. Oh, shoot! It's another effing time jump. Six years, mother farmers! Judith convinces Rosita and Eugene to bring Magna, Yumiko, Luke, Kelly, and Connie back to Alexandria. They receive a cold welcome from Michonne, who puts them in front of a council and exposes Magna for lying. Screw you. Also, she was hiding a knife in her belt. Your relationship with Michonne has changed. It's a telltale joke. Meanwhile, Carol, now dressed in her best Portlandia cosplay, agrees That's to take weird. Henry, who is a now a teen, to Hilltop I to wonder why they didn't have a Also, we learned Gabe and Rosita are a couple. Hmm. Sure, no, why not? Jesus is running Hilltop, and Negan asks Judith hmm. if she's ever seen a plane before. Hmm, why would they have a telltale joke? That's, That's not normal. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Just had to show you. Let's be, let's get back. Before she hasn't. Elsewhere, Henry and Carol get ambushed by the saviors on the road, who steal Carol's wedding ring and sends them away. Carol decides it's just a ring, and she'll just move on. Just kidding. She burns them alive in their sleep. Oh, I love you, Carol. Anyway, Megan nearly kills Michonne until she sees her baby. That's right. Michonne had Rick's baby during the time jump, just so strangers would see it and decide not to kill her. <laughs> Magna then makes peace with Michonne, but she won't agree to be a babysitter, so Michonne sends him to Hilltop anyways. Later, Eugene and Rosita get surrounded by walkers on a radio recon mission. Eugene breaks his leg, and they're forced to hide in a ditch where they discover... The Whisper! Walkers can apparently talk. We've missed so much in the last six years, guys. Carol and Henry find Daryl in the woods, who looks more homeless than usual. Probably because he literally doesn't have a home. He does have a dog named Dog, though, and if the show okay. kills him, I swear to God, Daryl explains he's never found Rick's body. Duh, he's gonna be in movies, and he's been living in isolation since. Yeah, Thankfully, I'll be back, Carol guys. I'll be back. Are you guys ready to finish this? Snaps him out of it and convinces him to move to Hilltop and look after Henry for her. On the road, Michonne tells Sadiq she can't go to Hilltop and see Maggie, and Sadiq is like, I don't know if you've read the trades, but Maggie's very busy. Maggie left to see Georgie like a year ago. Before she can get pissed, they're all attacked by walkers, including Magnus old pal Bernie. Uh -huh. And they survive. After she shoots a flare, Aaron and Jesus find Rosita alone in the woods. She tells them she left Eugene in a barn, so they take her back to Hilltop and then head off with Daryl to find Eugene. Michonne finally arrives at Hilltop, and Tara is none too pleased to see her and her new friends. Awkward. Henry gets to work at forging metal, but not relationships with Enid. He later makes friends, gets trash past curfew, saves a walker from torture, and then gets thrown in jail for breaking the rules. Meanwhile, Negan finds his cell door unlocked and leaves. You can't keep Negan in a box. Daryl and his gang finally locate Eugene, who is scared shitless about the whispering walkers. He's like, walkers are talking, and we need to get the fudge out of here. They head to a graveyard where they kill walkers until one jukes Jesus out and stabs him from behind. No! Walk it off! No, he's dead. We're not yeah, going to do any resurrection jokes. Detective Daryl discovers the walker is actually Old Man Robinson. Why? No, it's a dude wearing a mask, which, holy shit, guys, the ramifications of that are crazy. And that's the shocking way the first half of The Walking Dead Season 9 ends. Wow, that was like two seasons worth of story. I love this. I love the second half. I already got on DVD one see. I already got the ninth season on DVD. I got it when it first showed up. I didn't just want to tell you I wanted to keep it a secret. Until it returned. But I realized we're not getting cable back. So I'm, well, we, I'm still going to watch it. I could have actually, you know what, I probably could have done that. But still, we're still going to, we're going to work on the second half right now. As this little mini recap. Wait, why didn't I not do this before?
Oh, he has Henry's dead. Thank God. Because I never liked Henry. What was Henry's last name again? I, uh, fuck it. Um. That was the Walking Dead recap. I know people are not going to agree with me, but I hear Telltale's game to be part of the Walking Dead universe. I don't care what anybody says. I count it as part of the Walking Dead universe. That's how fun it is. Thanks, so thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye. We're getting season 5 of Telltale's The Walking Dead.